Howdy there folks, Redneck here. You know, I've always wanted to make a Q&A video, have y'all good watchers ask me some questions on cool stuff and me answering them. Uh, just a heads up first, a lot of the people whom I took questions from also have channels of their own. Shout out to all of you, thank you, and y'all viewers make sure to check their channels out. The links are in the description below. So without further ado, let's get to those questions now. The first three inquiries come from one of my colleagues, Dylan Tomasi. His first question is, from concept to final product, what's the process of making your videos? Well, for starters, I think about what I want to review, and when my mind is set, I start to gather the footage. While doing that, I write down the pros and cons for what I'm critiquing on a piece of paper. Uh, once I'm done with that, I write a script, and when that's completed, all that's left to do is film, record my voice, and then edit. Now, when I'm making an AMV or a GMV, the process is different. Long story short, the material in the music video chooses the song, not the other way around. There are exceptions, but very few. Dylan's next question is, do you feel that YouTube doesn't care about small channels like ours, which makes it impossible for us to get big? Uh, yes and no at the same time. On one end, I believe that YouTube definitely plays favorites to some degree, and thus they're always going to push the content from those lucky few. In a way, though, they kind of have to do that because there's just too many people uploading videos to this site. However, YouTube does tend to reward you the more you upload and or stream. That's one of the reasons I want to start releasing videos on a once a week basis. And to those who want to know if I'm ever going to live stream in the future, I will as soon as I get the equipment to do it. Anyway, Dylan's final question is, if you could interview one person in the whole world, who would it be? Currently living person would totally have to be the singer for the band Motley Crue, Vince Neil. The reason behind that is because I freaking love hair metal, and Motley Crue to this day are the undisputed kings of that particular genre even more so than Twisted Sister. Sorry, D. Snyder. As for a deceased person that I would have loved to have interviewed when he was alive is Howard Hughes. That guy was a fucking visionary, and he lived a very interesting life. If any of you folks haven't seen the film The Aviator yet, try to find it and watch it. Uh, it'll fill you in on who Mr. Hughes was. Okay, moving on to my other friend slash colleague Michael Kirchenberger and his three queries. If you had the proper training, would you swim across the English Channel? Oh hell yeah, I love swimming. In fact, that's one of my favorite things to do during late spring and all throughout summer. Uh, speaking of which, the summers here in NorCal can get pretty damn brutal, but fortunately there's a lot of places to swim, which is great. Mike's second question is, what would be your favorite anime series that includes movies? This is gonna sound a bit cliche, but I gotta say it. I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, so for sure that series. The only reason I haven't made an AMV or review of the show is because I love it so much I would have to do a DBZ marathon. Hell, I'm up for devoting half a year or maybe a little more just for the occasion. If you folks out there think that would be a good idea, tell me in the comments. Now on to Mike's third question. If you could travel anywhere on Earth, where would it be? Mongolia. Totally Mongolia. The reason for that is because both the culture and especially the history intrigues me. I'd love to go see some of those hella old Buddhist ashrams and monasteries, ride a horse or a camel, explore around Ulaanbaatar, mingle with the locals. I'd have a blast, man. Granted, I'd like to learn the language before I would ever go there, and if I'm gonna learn Mongolian, I might as well learn Russian too, seeing as how, for the most part, the Mongolians use the Cyrillic alphabet. Other nations I would like to visit include, but aren't limited to, Russia, Japan, Brazil, and Kenya. Alrighty, I'm gonna answer some questions now from Classic Review Corps, aka Mighty Jason. He asks first, what is your favorite game developer? 
Well, in the case of a company, I would have to say Bethesda. They developed every Elder Scrolls title, and I probably spent more time playing those games than any other. They also made every Fallout title from 3 onward, and that's yet another series I've poured a shit ton of hours into. Bethesda is also the publisher for a few other franchises I love, such as Wolfenstein and Doom. Now, in terms of who my favorite developer is person-wise, I'd have to say it's a two-way tie between Yuji Naka and Shigeru Miyamoto. The former is the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, my all-time favorite video game franchise, and the latter created Mario and Zelda. Jason asks second, what is your favorite console? That honor goes to Sega's 16-bit masterpiece, the Genesis, Mega Drive everywhere outside North America. The Genesis was the first system I played, the first system I collected games for, and the first that I loved, pretty much. It was also the console that the Sonic series started on, and I gotta admire it for that. Believe it or not, I still own the Genesis I had as a little guy, and it still works. I also have the CD and 32X add-ons that make the whole thing complete. In the future, when I review a console for the first time, the Mega Drive may very well be it. I should note that I also grew up with an NES and an SNES, so we'll see when that time comes. Finally, Jason asks thirdly, what is your favorite game of all time, and what was the most disappointing game you ever played? Actually, there's a number of games that are my all-time favorite, but if I had to think of one of them off the top of my head, it would probably be Far Cry 4. Far Cry is my second favorite video game franchise, and the fourth title is, in my opinion, the best. It took everything that was done in Far Cry 3, made it better, and added a few things. I also think the narrative and main character in Far Cry 4 were really good. It's also cool that the game took place in Nepal, a nation that typically goes overlooked despite its awesomeness. The most disappointing game I've ever played would definitely have to be that 2011 FPS game, Brink. That title might be functional, but damn is it boring. It's a real shame too, cause Splash Damage, the team behind Wolfenstein Enemy Territory and Quake Wars, were the ones who made Brink. It was also kinda hyped and I guess you could say I bought into it. Too bad it had to suck. My next two questions come from another fellow gamer YouTuber, I Don't Give a Thumb. He's asked me, what's one video game series that you would like to see come back? Well, I would say Command and Conquer, but they've recently released remasters of CNC 1 and CNC Red Alert, so who knows? Maybe that franchise will make a comeback soon. One series I know won't be releasing anything new for probably a real long time is Castlevania. This goes for pretty much anything Konami owns, but Castlevania especially. And I'm more or less talking about the Metroidvania Castlevania titles. They haven't made anything like that since Order of Ecclesia back in 2008. To say that it's long overdue for another action RPG Castlevania game would be an understatement. Konami seriously needs to get their heads out of their asses. Thumb also gave me the question, what's your favorite movie and cartoon based off a video game? My favorite video game movie is Mortal Kombat, the Paul Anderson one. I like MK Annihilation 2, but for much different reasons. Now, I love Paul Anderson's Mortal Kombat because that film did a lot of shit right. For one thing, it follows the plot of the first MK title quite well. Far too often, writers, directors, and even producers take a lot more liberties than they should with the source material. And whilst Mortal Kombat isn't 100% faithful to MK1, it comes a lot closer to the OG continuity more so than, say, Street Fighter the movie or the Mario Brothers film. Now, as for my favorite animated video game-based show, I'm gonna say the Ruby Spears Mega Man cartoon. One word. Amazing. Amazingly animated, amazingly voiced, amazingly written, it's just an amazing show. Also, just like Paul Anderson's Mortal Kombat, the Mega Man cartoon sticks very close to the source material. The show also proves that American animation companies are more than capable of making legitimately good video game-based cartoons. Now that's not to say Ruby Spears didn't have enough stuff to work with. After all, there were 13 Mega Man games out already by the time the show aired. My next set of questions comes from famous video game review Retro Mini Me. It's all one word and I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. 
Matthias asked, what got you started in making reviews? It all kind of started when I started watching videos on YouTube way back in 2007. I didn't have a channel yet, and I was also in high school at the time, but I really enjoyed videos from reviewers such as WizWar100, Armake21, and especially the Angry Video Game Nerd. Ever since I saw those guys do what they did, I was like, oh, I want to try my hand at that. I have a pretty good knowledge on video games, and I wanted to share that with folks. When I first began back in 2010, all I did was just make AMVs because I simply didn't have the equipment yet to do reviews. Once I did, I made my first two reviews, but I quickly realized that the editing software I was using wasn't all that good. But, you know, you do what you can with what you have. In the years since, I've gotten a better microphone, better editing software, and recently I've gotten a better camera, so now my videos will look better too. I have a green screen as well, and that'll definitely be implemented more in the near future. When you make any kind of content on YouTube, it's a good thing to always strive to make that content better. Retro's next little query is, what's your ultimate goal? To be honest, I'm pretty realistic about it. I don't think I'll ever reach a million subscribers. That would be nice, but then I wouldn't really be able to respond too often to all you great folks. I think if I reach somewhere between 1 to 10k, I'll be happy. I want to eventually review nearly every console, mostly systems released in North America, but also a few things that never saw wide or any international release. I'll let you in on one of the things on my bucket list of reviews. I would love to do a five-part marathon of the Philips CDI console and its four infamous Nintendo licensed games. I think y'all know what titles I'm talking about. Retro's third question is, Mike's Pizza's missing. Do you know where it is? Um... <laughs> you fucking caught me, man. I ate it all. Ha! <laughs> but yeah, I like pizza. In fact, I'm probably one of the few people you'll ever meet that actually likes anchovies on pizza. Seriously, I think it tastes good. My next batch of questions come from my close friend, Alan Jr. AJ Marshall. He wants to know, what's your favorite 80s and 90s metal bands? For the good old 80s, it's Motley Crue for sure. As I said previously, those guys were and still are the undisputed hair metal kings. It was also Motley Crue along with Hanoi Rocks and Quiet Riot that really exposed the public to glam metal and thus popularized it. Now, I'm well aware that Van Halen and Kiss were the actual inventors of hair metal, but it was Motley Crue who perfected it. Best of all, they're back together now, which means we could be seeing a new album from them soon. Now, as for my favorite 90s metal band, that honor goes to Alice in Chains. Uh, musically speaking, nothing personified the 1990s quite like grunge. You had awesome bands like Soundgarden and Nirvana, naturally, but later on you had other terrific groups like Days of the New and Seether. It was Alice in Chains, though, that I always followed ever since I was a kid. Nobody, not even Nirvana, could match the sardonic and melancholy charm that Alice in Chains were putting out. Hell, they're still around today. They may not have their original vocalist anymore, rest in peace, Lane Staley, but William Duvall sure as shit fills that spot perfectly. He's too awesome. AJ's next question is, who's your favorite anime character of all time? Well, it's a two-way tie between Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z and Genos from One Punch Man. I guess you could say out of every anime character out there, Vegeta and Genos are the only ones that I actually kind of identify with. Both Genos and Vegeta may not be the strongest guys in their respective franchise, but they are the second strongest. It's their drive and tenacity that I admire the most. Vegeta's a bit of an underdog. Almost all the bad guys in DBZ underestimate him. He can be a bit cocky, but he can typically back it up. With Genos, it's his drive to always improve and to always reach high. Genos is also really smart. He's kind of the bookish type, and I get where he comes from when he explains something or plans out something. Anyway, AJ's last question is, what game genres will you not review? Everything's on the table, and I'll review pretty much any genre out there, save except anything made for toddlers. And the reason why is because those are such easy targets. Of course, preschooler games aren't going to be very good, they're meant for babies. I am willing to make some exceptions, though. 
There are three Mario games that I know of that are geared towards toddlers, and there's this one preschooler Sonic game. I'd love to review those, because, you know, that's Mario and Sonic. But even when I do, I'm not going to grade them. It's simply unnecessary. There's also the other end of that spectrum, where I won't touch anything X-rated. I don't like age-restricting my videos, and if I reviewed anything like that, I would have to. Also, I just personally don't want anything like that on my channel. It's fucking pervert shit to me. I'm mostly talking about those Japanese dating sims, but I'm also including stuff like what was released on the Atari way back in the early 80s. So yeah, no porn games. The only exception I'm willing to make is for this curious little 3DO FMV title called Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. And in that case, the game censors itself, and it's far more suggestive than anything else. All right, all right, folks, we're getting down to the last inquiries. These next few are from friend and all-around awesome dude Harrison Surtees. His first question is, In the Super Mario series, what game do you rate the best, and what do you rate the worst? That's easy. I rate Mario 64 as the best. Mario 64 was the first true 3D Super Mario game I ever played, and it wowed me the first time I played it. Seeing Mario in 3D was pivotal, and it was a demonstration of the new direction the platforming genre was going to take. Now, I'll be honest, a lot of my love for Mario 64 is fueled by nostalgia, but no one can deny that Mario 64 was revolutionary, and it set a standard. I also can't wait to review that game. I have a lot to say about it. However, I should note that I have about 10 plus other Mario games to review, so we're still a bit far away from a Mario 64 video. Granted, I should consider that a good thing because immediately after my Mario 64 review, I'm going to tackle my worst rated Mario game, Super Mario Sunshine. I know I'm probably going to get some flack for saying that, but hear me out. I legit tried to, at the very least, like Mario Sunshine, but it did everything it could to piss me off. Examples include, but aren't limited to, bad voice acting and bad pacing. I actually have a lot to say about that game too, but like with Mario 64, it's gonna have to wait. I still got titles such as Mario World, Mario Land, and hell, even Mario is Missing will be reviewed before we ever get to Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine. Harrison's second question is, what game series do you know the most lore about? That honor will have to go to the Elder Scrolls franchise. I was 13 when I first played an Elder Scrolls game, and it was Morrowind on the OG Xbox. Since then, I've at least played every other game in the series, including the spin-offs, and I own the five main titles. It probably helped that I was also getting into D&D around the same time I was playing Morrowind, and that just fueled my love for the franchise even more. I also can't begin to tell y'all how freaking psyched I am to find out where Elder Scrolls 6 is going to take place. A lot of fans speculate that it might take place in both High Rock and Hammerfell. That would be fucking sweet if that were true. However, no matter where it takes place, I have a good feeling the game itself is going to be hella fun. Anyway, Harrison's third question is, Top 5 anime you can binge watch at any time from least liked to most. Uh, let's, let's see. Shin Chan at number 5, because that's a seriously funny and seriously underrated anime. Cowboy Bebop at number 4, because of nostalgia. I used to watch it all the time at midnight on TV back in the day, and also for its animation and story. Uh, pretty much anything in the Dragon Ball franchise at number 3, but more specifically the original Dragon Ball series, where Goku and Krillin were kids. The reason behind that is because I actually watched Dragon Ball before Dragon Ball Z, and it's also a little more memorable to me personally. At number two is One Punch Man. I've seen both the first and second seasons, and the OVAs. I absolutely love the One Punch Man franchise. It's almost like the second coming of DBZ in a way. Finally, at number one, we have the great and powerful JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That anime is actually a more recent one, because I've just finished the third season, the one where Joseph and Jotaro defeat Dio. And I really want to get to the fourth and fifth seasons. I friggin' love JoJo's. It's too damn awesome. Now moving on to a couple inquiries from a real OG friend of mine. Folks, meet Michael Donaghy. He has inquired, What's the worst thing you've reviewed? That dishonor will forever be on that horrible, horrible game, Fugitive Hunter War on Terror. 
I assume most of y'all have seen my review of that, and if you haven't, let me give you a quick rundown. Fugitive Hunter is an FPS title that stars a blandest tofu main guy, the gameplay is beyond awful, the graphics are ugly as sin, you get to fight Osama Bin Laden, but you don't get to kill him. Fugitive Hunter nearly ruined the FPS genre for me. Had it not have been for Halo, Red Faction, and Postal 2, I probably wouldn't be playing any FPS games today. Which would be a real shame, because then I'd miss out on current, or at least more current, FPS titles such as Bioshock, or Far Cry, or hell, Doom Eternal. But yeah, Fugitive Hunter came deathly close to killing a whole genre for me. No other bad game from any other genre has ever been able to do that. Michael has asked me secondly, favorite rock or metal band and why? My favorite rock band is ACDC. Both my parents were into rock, so a lot of my musical tastes are in some ways thanks to them. My dad really enjoyed Led Zeppelin and ACDC, and whenever a tune from one of them came on the radio, he'd crank it up. The first song that introduced me to ACDC that I can remember was TNT, and after that it was Fly on the Wall. Ever since then I've been collecting the band's CDs, and I currently own all the studio albums and that one EP. I would start collecting vinyl records, because I would hella love to listen to ACDC that way, but my record player needs to be fixed. I need to replace the belt. Anyway, my favorite metal band, and I mean traditional heavy metal, is Motorhead. That band has made so many awesome songs, it's unbelievable. I would say my absolute favorite album from Motorhead is March or Die. That album had the songs I Ain't No Nice Guy, You Better Run, and my personal favorite, a cover of Ozzy Osbourne's Hellraiser. In fact, I'm of the opinion that Motorhead did Hellraiser a little better than Ozzy. Uh, March of Die had another cover song, it was of Ted Nugent's Cat Scratch Fever, and that was pretty fucking sweet. Ted Nugent's cool. Michael's last question is, favorite thing Shasta has said? That would be that time Shasta called me an idiot for choosing to play as Luigi in Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels. In that game, Luigi can jump higher than Mario, but it's at a cost. Luigi has traction issues, meaning he slides around a lot more. I, in effect, made what was already a brutally difficult game even harder for myself. Shasta's pretty good at pointing out some of the asinine stuff I do from time to time. I want to eventually get him a voice synthesis color so he'll be able to speak in the videos. Bet Shasta will love that. My final questions come from an old and dear family friend, Kimberly Wolf. She's given me a bit of a pop quiz, and she wants to know, if I know, who was the original singer of ACDC. Well, technically it was Bon Scott. He was there from 1973 all the way to 1979 when he died. But before him, there was another guy called Dave Evans. Evans only did one song with ACDC, and it was Can I Sit Next to You, Girl. He was replaced because Angus and Malcolm wanted their music to go in a more punk and bluesy direction and Dave Evans was a glam rocker, much in the same vein as T-Rex and New York Dolls. Kim's next quiz question is, who has the most Super Bowl wins? Uh, I want to say the Packers, but I think it might be the Patriots? Not really sure. I can tell you who my favorite team is. I love the New York Giants. Go Big Blue! Well everyone, I really enjoyed taking all these great questions from y'all. If you folks like this video, and you think I should do more, I will. I'll probably make a second Q&A anyway, because I definitely miss a few of you guys. So, if you have a YouTube or a Twitter or a Facebook account, leave me three questions, and I'll get to them in the next video. Also, just to note, be on the lookout for a Kirby AMV that I'll be posting next week, and also be sure to catch the room review the week after. Okay, farewell for now, folks.